Okay, welcome back students, A to Z haircutting. Today we're going to be doing a layered cut on um, this person and what we're doing, the first thing you do, so, so what I want to demo today is I want to talk to you about draping the client. You can see that she's already sitting on the chair, she's already ready to get taken care of. This is where you're going to find, and I just lost them, what did I do with them? Okay, this is a Santa strip. And what you're going to have with your Santa strip, oh, here they are, sorry. Okay, they're going to, you're going to see them on the wall at the school. But these are Santa strips. What you want to do is you want to get one. And the reason for, the reason for a Santa strip, I know it's, I only have one job. I heard you the other day. I dropped it. Sorry, I'll have to tell you guys about that. Anyways, uh, so what you do, you get your Santa strip out and you want to stretch it. You want to place it around your client's neck. The purpose for the Santa strip, now I'm going to turn her around so you can see what I'm doing here. The purpose for the Santa strip, you're going to place it flat like that. You're going to bring it over. Is to protect the client. So the purpose for it is to protect, see how I kind of tucked it in right here? All right, so the purpose for the Santa strip is to protect the client from this part of the drape that was on another client. In other words, skin on skin. And you notice that we're both wearing masks. This particular video is being done during our coronavirus pandemic. So if students should see this later on, this is why we're all masked up. So being that I know where I'm at on the head form, I've already shampooed her and I'm gonna shampoo, um, I'm gonna show you how to shampoo on uh, her sister's hair but uh, well, I've already shampooed it so I'll demo that for you in a little bit on the next video but I want you to see that her hair is layered and this is called the, the, the 90 degree or the uniform layering now there's a process to go to do this cut with hers the, the front is already slightly slightly layered and this is called face framing. And in some of our videos, you're gonna see this, this is gonna be repeated. So I wanna show you how to do the haircut itself. We're gonna hold the shear in the secondary position. Remember, we've got primary, secondary, and extended. So we're gonna hold the shear in the secondary position. We're going to cut across, straight across, just basically about half an inch or so, so that she can um, manage her hair a little better. By doing that, we're creating a good foundation. So to do that, I'm going to lean her head forward and I'm gonna comb her straight down. Now, I know where I'm at on the head form. So I'm not necessarily sh um, um, sectioning, but I am bringing it straight down, placing my fingers straight across and I hope that you can see this because I have to stand in front of her and making sure again with that secondary position. Now you notice my elbow came down. If I have my elbow up, do you see what happens? The elbow has to come down when you're doing this. So I'm going to take it to both sides of the area behind the ear and that's at the back nape area straight across and we're just taking off just like about a half inch. Start at the center nape, travel from side to side. So I'm gonna to travel to the area again, right there, right behind the nape. That nape line, I wanna make sure she's even, and she is. Now what I'm gonna do, definitely at that area behind the ear, I'm going to again bring this straight down. In other words, this is not traveling over. When hair travels, it becomes longer. We want to create a solid foundation. So we're traveling around the head, holding it straight down every time. My fingers are straight, my shear is straight, my elbow is in. And I'm traveling around the head form. What this does, it secures that her hair is going to fall uniformly or evenly across. I'm going to do it on this side shift your head just a bit and again you can see my guide right there so I'm taking the hair right at the area behind the ear and bringing it straight down straight 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 
and you can see those three areas they're done now if I bring this hair down I know it's not going to be long enough to cut so that's why I parted her off just below the parietal line so she was into the lower ridge right there so here's the center crown so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn her over to the side and you can see that right at right at the area behind the ear right in front of the area behind the ear we have an ever so slight corner you want to remove that corner that's a normal process that happened because of this square right here so the perimeter line where the hair grows you can see that so when we're coming around that is always going to be exposed so now you see that she's laying much nicer clean that up a little more bring her over to the other side and again ever so slight corner not very much of one on this side and strange how that happens but it does now because we've cut her hair so many times we've got an idea what we're going to do and this particular type of layering is called a crown layer so the crown layering that I'm going to do, I'm going to take it at the center crown. I'm going to subsection it into pie shapes. I'm going to bring it straight up and I'm actually going to cut it to what looks like I'm making a bowl. And it's just pointed toward the crown from the apex. And I'm going to go in a circular motion. And basically because I know this, the hair at the lower ridge is not going to reach I'm just going to travel around it I've got my guide on this side and I've got my shorter hair right at the center the diagonal cut is the same always remember to palm your comb again another pie shaping do you see that triangle you see that triangle that I just sectioned out let me show it to you so you want triangle parts all of it going to the center crown slightly at you know just all you need to do is go to the lower ridge because this is not going to reach it's just barely there all right so I'm going to bring it over pick it up there's my guide at the center crown pointing my fingers down to that very center point about a dime size point now my last triangle on this side Remember that we always go side to center, side to center, or center to side. We never travel all the way around. Now one thing I want you to notice in the cut, do you see that nice little volume we've created there? See how it's not there? Once we take that hair off, shorter moves longer. And that's what's creating that foundation for that to grow and have a little bit of volume. So I'm gonna come back right here, center crown, Take it to the parietal line, pick it up, and draw it back to the crown. So this hair is not going to get cut, but again, focusing on that. I hope you can see this. So another one, and taking it again, we only need to go to the lower ridge there. And I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to turn her this way so you can see it. And again, just bringing it, all of it making like a bowl right there. So coming down to the lower ridge back by the occipital area. And see, it's just like a little bit of a corner is all it is. But we're cleaning that up for her. One of the things that she said was her hair was starting to stick out. So this is going to take care of that. Now, do you see that little bit of a lift? A little bit of movement there. So can anybody tell me where I'm going to find another corner? We've talked about this. I've mentioned it in the past. You notice that the hair at the center, tip of the ear to the lower nape, traveled down and then it traveled up. So when hair moves, it's going to create length. So we're just going to subsection off the flat part of the head. We're going to bring that forward and I'm just going to take this out and I have, and you can see that corner. There's short, short, and I'm just going to get rid of this to give her just a little more movement. I'm not getting rid of any length. 
and you notice that I'm traveling side to center. That's not my phone. It's that lady back there. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pull this out. Again, just traveling just slightly below the nape line corner. And this is a real indication of a corner. You can see it. Now I'm gonna charge you guys double, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we're going to travel around, and again, you can definitely see that corner. See it? And that's what you're going to get. So, side to center, side to center. Now, I'm going to go to the very center and pull both sides. That if there be anything there, it will take care of both of them. So, now she's perfectly even on both sides. If we wanted to look for another corner, we would look in the nape. We don't want to do that. We want this lift here, and then we want some fullness or some thickness on the bottom. Otherwise, it would be a little choppier than what we want. Now, I'm gonna take it from the parietal line. And see, because I know where I'm at on the head form. That's why I constantly talk to you about know where you're at to know where you're going. So I'm gonna take it from tip of the ear to parietal line. And that's gonna help and I'm gonna bring it all straight out. And I'm just gonna clean up those ends just a bit. That's it. And then I've got a corner in this area. And what creates that corner is this elevation, this corner right here. That's going to create what you see, that little gap. So I'm going to bring that straight out. And again, and this time because I want it light I'm going to do something that's called point cut it. Cut it, you want to put your ring finger out and just follow that line and just open and close your shear across. That's it. It doesn't have to be a hard line. You want it soft. Okay? So I'm going to bring the other side up. Now what have we not done yet? Can anybody let me know what we haven't cleaned up yet? Again, take my finger and just, and again, it's parietal line to tip of the ear. That's your angle and you hold it. All the hair is drawn to that stationary guide. And we've got that little corner there and we just clean it up. All right, now, right, the top. The top hasn't been done yet. Now it's my phone. <laughs> okay, I'm hanging up on that. I'm going to turn it off. Okay, we're still doing real good on time, students. So what I want to show you is we did take it from the crown, correct? So I'm going to take it to the center apex, to the top, before I work on her bangs. So I'm going to subsection off the parietal line, take it from front to back, center apex, and I'm just going to point cut it because I don't really want a hard line there. From the apex back to the center crown. That's it. But do you see that volume now that we've created because it's a hard line going back and forth? Now if I would have done it side to side, and you'll see it on other ones, it would just lay down. Now I'm going to subsection off her bangs. Again, center apex, at the end of the center apex, to the parietal line, so it's a pie shaping. It is not... You never cut bangs in this form. Because then you're always going to end up with that short piece that's going to drive you nuts. So you always want to take the bangs in a pie shaping, bring it forward, and we want to see how they fall, so that lets us know about how much we want to take off. That's how you measure it out. And you'll see that it cups around the face real nice. Now, one thing I want to do is make sure that she's even on both sides. And she is. Now remember, one side grows forward, one side grows back. 
and you're always going to get just a little more volume on one side than the other. That side grows forward. See how that stays back nice? This fights it. It's not going to go back. This goes back behind her ear very comfortably. That means she's human. <laughs> so this part that keeps parting down the center is going to drive her crazy and it's going to drive me crazy. Now, before you put your shears down, you always close them. You want to have a towel. You wipe off the back end and wipe off the other end. You never put your shears down wet. You always want to dry them off and get the hair off of them. So I'm going to get my texture shear out now. Hold it the same way, secondary position. And I want to get rid of this part. The comb to the texture shear is going to do that for me. So I'm going to direct it towards that center part. And I'm going to stay like about an inch and a half away from the scalp. Just one switch. Now, you can already see that hair popping up and trying to cover that. When I do the other side, I should be able to comb it straight back. And do you see, I can scatter it and that part no longer is a problem. So it stays nicely. If I want to create a little bit of volume on the flat part of the head, I'm going to section that off and I'm going to go slightly behind the tip of the ear and slide almost into the apex area, almost into the area behind the ear. I'm going to pull that up. I'm just going to take a small section and I want some volume. I want this to stand up. If I take my shear and I hold the comb of the shear down, it's going to lay down. I want it to pop up for me. Just one. And it gives it that nice choppy look and it pops up real nice. Sorry. So again, right at the apex. Take a subsection out. And I want it, shear, the teeth of the shear, just one time. And now you can see that little bit of a lift, a little bit of control. Now remember, she said that it was popping up on her. So I want these ends right here to lay down. Now see how they're trying to pop up? So I'm going to subsection it, go around the crown, go to the ends. The ends are where the problem is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's only broke right here where it's popping up. So I'm going to do like a half circle. One, two. Now see that lay down. See that calm down right there. Where this is popping up on this side, this is starting to calm down for her. Same thing on the other side. Move that over. This is the problem. Half moon. So now she's going to lay down real nice. All right. And I believe that we have enough time to teach you about blow drying. Cover that. I'm going to take this smaller brush and again the sectioning is nice. It's nice to section. However, I don't have time for it. So when you're working with several clients at the same time, you want to get as much done as you can. So I'm going to comb it forward. I'm going to roll my brush. You never point the blow dryer towards her head. You always go along with the hair. And you notice now, look, I'm going to let that cool down. Now you see the volume that I'm getting there. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to work the sides. And again, you never point it towards the scalp. And you always want to go from scalp to ends to help that cuticle lay down. All right, heat that up, let it cool. Don't just take it off. 
and look at the volume, the nice movement we get. Now I'm going to come up to the next section. And once you learn how to blow dry, once you learn how to manipulate your ground brush, and we'll be practicing that. Now let's say that I really want that to stand up. I'm going to get close to the scalp. I'm going to hold it there for just a minute. Now I'm going to let it cool. And look at the volume. So you get a real nice lift in knowing how to do these procedures. So I'm going to go back to the crown. Bring it up. I want volume back there. And you'll notice I keep turning my brush. You see that nice volume we're getting? I'm going to travel down. And I can add that to that now. Because I've got, uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating volume. It's what's called the base or the area closest to the scalp. That's where I'm heating it up and holding it. And drawing it up into it. See that? I'm holding that hair up. And then I'm getting some really, really nice volume out of it. So now at the area behind the ear, along the center nape, or the side of the nape there, blend it in with the area behind the ear, and we're getting a really, really nice look. So I'm going to go back to the top here. Right now what I want to do is I want to draw her hair off to the side. And you see that we have no problems now with that part. It's not splitting there. Close to the scalp. So once you know where you're at on the scalp, now she's got shorter hair. If her hair was uh, to her shoulders, let's say that, I would definitely part it. Her hair is short enough that I can work around this and make it, make it uh, do what I want it to do. You have to learn to take control of the hair or else it's going to control you and do what it wants. Now she doesn't have curly hair. She doesn't have, uh, uh, she might have a slight wave but not anything to be concerned about. Again, we're working on the back. Take care of that back area. And you notice I'm using my blow dryer to also help my shear immediately put it under there. Now this is going to take practice on your part. And again, rolling it, letting it cool, and creating that nice volume. I haven't done the center nape yet. I'm going to shift your head down just a bit so I can get under there. Being very careful not to burn her with the iron, the, I mean the, the blow dryer, because that gets pretty hot. Now, see that nice coolness that we have on the bottom now. Okay, she's not completely dry here at the center occipital, so I'm going to go back in there. And she's got some really, really nice movement. I can scatter it, and it's still going to just lay real nice for her. Now I want to give her just a little bit of a bang. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Bring it over. There you go. All right, now I want this to lift out a bit. Heat it up. Hold it a minute. Let it go. You see how that pops out real nice? We'll take her over to the other side. We want both sides to be equally elevated. Even though one grows forward, one grows back. Just hold it. And there, she's got a real nice lift. Real nice finish into the cut. Much better. And I wish we had highlights so that you could really see it a lot more with the, yeah. the light. But so I'm going to turn her around slowly. Shift her head down so you can see that this is laying real nice and she's she's got some slight layers But nothing is popping up anymore. It's all laying out real real nice on her 
So students, I hope this helped you. I hope you can get some information on it. If you have any questions, please comment, and you know I'll be answering them. But for now, until we get into the classroom, this is the only way that we're going to be able to get this um, and see it and learn it. So let's just do the best we can with what we've got. Thank you so much. God bless.